Okay, so let's add the run animation to this uh, this character here. Before we can add the animation, we'll have to create it. So let's go to the sprites and select the characters, um, character sprite that is, and we will have to find the run. So if you go all the way down here, jump attack, run, here we go. So here we have run 0 to 9 again. So we will do the exact same thing as we did before, select the run, hold shift down and click on the last run. So now we have selected all the run animations. You'll have to do the same. You'll have to drag the run into into the scene. And the new run underscore underscore zero zero zero. We can actually delete it because we don't need it. We need to apply the animation to our player. So just delete run zero here. And inside the character folder here, you'll see that it created a new character controller and a new run animation. So we don't need the controller because we already have a controller on our player. And all we need to animate a character is one single controller. So just delete this controller here. And now we are left with the run animation alone. So to get this run animation into the folder, we'll have to take it and drag it into the animations folder as we did before. And then go to the animations folder and press F2 and Sorry, click on the run, press F2 and rename it to run simply like this. So then we should have a idle animation and a run animation in our animations folder. The next thing we'll have to do is to add this animation to the player. And we can do that by selecting the player inside our hierarchy, clicking on the animator. And then you'll see we have the idle animation in here, which is the default. And we'll have to take the run animation and pull it into um, the animator window. So now we have an idle animation and a run animation. The next thing we'll have to do is to add a transition from our idle into our run animation. And we can do that by right clicking on the idle, click make transition, and then clicking on the run. So right now you'll see that it can transition from the idle to the run animation which means that if we select the player here and we play the game it will actually play idle and then we'll go to the run animation and then start playing the run animation and the reason that it just transitions like that is because we haven't put any condition on this arrow here the only condition is that it has an exit time which is, is 0 0.7 so the transition will take 0 0.25 seconds so at some point it will just transition from idle to run without our interference and we are not interested in that. We will like to base the run animation on our movement. So we'll have to click on the arrow between idle and run. Then click on the exit time here to remove the exit time. And just remove the fixed duration here as well. And then you go to the transition duration and you set it to zero. So right now it will not go into the run animation and the transition will be instant which means if we have a fixed duration and a fixed transition duration the duration will take a while so when you press the button to run that it will take like one quarter of a second before it actually starts running but in our game we would like it to transition directly to the run animation when we want it um, because the transition time is maybe more used in a 3d game where you can blend the animation some so that he stands in idle and he needs to run, then he can blend over in the run animation slowly. So, remove the fixed duration here. Um, and if you play the game now, it will not transition into the run animation by itself, because there is no exit time on it. Okay, so now we will need to add the functionality or the condition for transitioning from idle to run. And we can do that by clicking on the arrow here between run and idle, selecting the conditions here and clicking the little plus. Okay, so right now we don't have any parameters we can set for setting our condition. So we'll go to the animator window. Here we'll select the parameters and click the little plus button. And then we can add a new parameter we can use to trigger the different animations. And the parameter we will use is a float because our speed is a float in our game. So we might as well use that, right? So click on the float and call it um, speed. 
it is very important that if you write speed with non capital S that you remember that inside your script because this one is case sensitive. So if I would write speed like this with a non capital S, then I will have to write speed with non capital S in my script. But if I change it to a capital S like this, then I will have to change the name inside the script as well when we get to that. So it has nothing to do with the speed we have right now. It has nothing to do with with uh, with this movement speed at all. It's nothing to do with that. It's later when we need to access this variable here that we'll need to make sure that it's spelled the correct correct way. Okay. So select the arrow, click on conditions, and then select the speed that you just created here. So we need to put up a condition for when we need to change from idle to run. And that condition could be if our speed is greater than 0 0.01. So if our speed changes to something greater than 0 0.01, then we will simply run from idle to our run animation. So we can test this by playing the game. And remember, you should still have the player selected so that you can see that this happens. Then you can take the speed here and if we add it to one, then he goes into the run animation as you can see here. So this is what is going to happen in our script when we change our horizontal value. Then we can use the horizontal value to change the speed so that he starts running. But we cannot go from run to idle yet. So we'll have to make a transition from run by right click on run, click make transition and click on idle. So now we have a transition back and as we did with the other transition, we'll have to remove the exit time, we'll have to remove the fixed duration and set the transition duration to zero. Again, the condition from going to, from run to idle is also based on the speed, but instead of being greater than zero, it should be less than, and then we have to go in and say it should be less than 0 0.01. Because if it's less than 0 0.01, well, then we're standing still. As you can see here, we can actually play the game. Our moment speed is suddenly 1. We start running. And if we suddenly think that we don't want to run more, we set it to 0. And then he stops running. Okay. So now our animator is actually set up for changing our character from idle to running. And we'll have to write the script to change this. So on our player, we have something called an animator component here. So we already have a, um, what is called a reference to the rigid body 2D, but we'll also have to create a reference to our animator so that we can access it from the player script and change this variable speed from zero to one, depending on the direction we're running. So in the top of the script, we will have to make a um, after rigid body private animator. If I could spell correctly, there we go, my animator. So this is my animator. And as we did with the rigid body, we'll have to make a reference to the animator attached to the player. So my animator equals get component animator. And there we go. So now my animator is referencing the animator on, on here on the player right here. So now we can actually start um, writing the code for animating the player. And it's very, very simple if we go to the script again. Um, and let's see where we want to do it. Let's just do it in the handle movement. So after we have moved our player, we can simply say that we want to get our animator. So we write my animator dot set float and we say speed with non capital S because my is mine is right written without capital S comma and then we have to write horizontal but as you can see right now we are acting on if our speed is greater than 0, 0.0 and if it's less than 0, 0.01 and the thing is that um, it returns a negative value that um, horizontal so we'll have to clamp it so that it always returns a positive value so instead of returning minus one for example it will return one and we can do that by saying math f dot abs 
returns the absolute value instead of a negative value. And then we do like this horizontal. There we go. So now it actually returns the correct values for us when we need to set the float. So let's save that and jump back to the game. If we play the game now, we are idling. If I start moving to the right, he starts running. If I stop moving and move the other way, he starts running to the left. So now I have a character that is animated for running. He can go in idle, he can run to the left and to the right. And yeah, that's basically it for this part of the tutorial. In the next one, I think I'll have a look at how we can uh, add the jump uh, to the character here. Um, but or actually, let, let's look at the attack first, because the jump will require us to create a level with some things that he can stand on, so that we need gravity back in our character. So in the next part, let's have a look at how we can make the attack and uh, animation.